here are five things I wish I knew before I became a florist. Hi guys, my name is Alexis. For those of you who don't know me, I have been a floral designer for the last eight years. Here on YouTube, I post floral design tutorials, flower business tips and advice. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more. Now, the first thing I wish I knew before I became a florist is I wish I knew how physically taxing the job was on my body. If you didn't know, I actually spend a lot of my days standing. So like being a floral designer, you don't really sit and arrange. You typically stand and arrange your flower arrangements, which means I'm standing for like eight to 10 hours a day on a busy day. My knees, my feet, my joints, they hurt pretty bad at the end of the day. Now I'm starting to put fashion aside and I'm actually trying to get more supportive sneakers. So I actually just found a really good pair of Asics. It's like a Nimbus gel something. I'll leave a link in the description box for my Amazon car or somewhere up here, there will be a link for these shoes. In addition to just standing all day, um, I find that I am moving heavy buckets of flowers like to and from various locations all day. So you really wanna make sure that you are eating your protein and packing on the muscles there because you are really just hauling things and moving things from place to place, especially on event days. Like on days that I'm setting up, I find that sometimes I have to go up like 50 flights of stairs there and back, there and back, and it's, it's really taxing. So definitely recommend to find a comfy pair of shoes. A big game changer for me that I have found is this wagon that I got from Walmart. So I found this little red wagon. In my area in the summertime, I see a lot of kids like sitting in these wagons while their parents like drag them around. But if you're looking for a really good wagon, I recommend to go on Amazon. Um, I think it's like the Ozark brand wagon. It's really good. Um, I don't have to like haul as many things onto the wagon, which is great. I do all of my events as a solo person. So having to like lug things back and forth and like carry things, like that's really hard for me. So get you a wagon, get you some nice comfortable shoes and I promise it'll make a huge difference for you. The next thing I wish I knew before I became a florist is how toxic flowers and plants really are. So I will say that when you get your flowers and your plants, they're usually sprayed with a ton of chemicals. And when I mean a ton of chemicals, I mean like over 7,000 different chemicals, guys. And just really want you to let that sink in because that's a lot of different chemicals that you are bringing into your home that you are breathing in. So things to think about, guys, like even as you are arranging as a florist, you want to start wearing some gloves. Now, I myself actually just started implementing this particular rule as of this year. So as of this year, I learned how truly toxic these plants and flowers are. So I'm wearing some protective gloves to keep my hands clean because I find that like as a florist, I eat with my hands. I'm constantly like arranging, eating with my hands, you know, like touching my face, doing things like that. So, you know, these plants and flowers, they're coming in from all over the world. And because of that, a lot of different countries have different safety regulations as far as like chemicals goes. I don't recommend eating any of the flowers that you buy from like a flower shop, a grocery store. Don't eat those flowers because they are sprayed with the chemicals. Only eat flowers from growers that you know don't spray with chemicals. I actually know a woman here in Philadelphia who grows edible flowers and she sells those flowers to like supermarkets, restaurants, if you want to like garnish your um, like food with like a pretty orchid or like a rose or hibiscus flower for hibiscus drink. Like those are the flowers that are okay to eat because they have been like produced and processed by someone who doesn't spray. But if you're just like going to the grocery store and you want to put orchids on your food, like don't do that because they are sprayed with chemicals. So. The next thing that I wish I knew before I became a florist is how much math is involved in being a florist. You might not realize it guys, but you actually need to be like pretty proficient in math to be a florist. And I say this because you need to be making sure that you are actually making money. I actually have a whole video stating like how to make your flower formulas so that way you are seeing a profit in your designs because it's very easy to spend that whole $60 in just the flowers and then keep nothing for yourself. So if you wanna learn how to make money and take some profit home at the end of the night, watch this video here. 
Now you can do this a number of ways. You can do this by simply just like writing down any journal, like your flower formulas. You can pull up an Excel sheet. But I personally, I use this app called Every Stem, and it really has helped change my business for the better. So what I do is I put in all the flowers that I plan to use for my events, calculates like my labor fees, and there I'm able to see like, okay, like did I charge enough for this particular piece? Do I need to charge more? Do I need more flowers? What's also great about Every Stem is that it keeps track of how many flowers you have left over. Let's say I just need one stem of peony for one arrangement. I now have nine stems of peony left over. There I can decide like, okay, like, do I really need this peony? Can I take it out? So that way I don't have to just have nine stems of flowers just left over. These are all things you wanna think about because these are things that are eating up at your profit, guys. Definitely recommend to check out that video where I teach you how to use the program and I teach you how to work with flower maths. So the next thing I wish I knew before I became a florist is that if you become a wedding or event florist, you can pretty much say goodbye to like every single weekend because most weddings and events take place on Saturday or Sunday. So therefore you will be working Saturday and Sunday, which also means that you will be missing out on events that take place on Saturday and Sunday. If you have like a baby shower that you wanna go to or a friend's birthday party, you know, you don't really have a social life because your business takes place on the weekend and you spend the week before like actually creating the event, making sure that it looks good. Now you can work it so that way your schedule, you do all your weddings on like one weekend and you have the other weekends off. Like you have flexibility. You don't have to take a wedding every weekend, but I mean, for some people, like if you wanna be making money all year round, like you kinda need to take a lot of weddings. So if you're like, all right, I don't wanna do wedding and event flowers. I wanna own a flower shop then you can pretty much say goodbye to all of the holidays. Christmas is busy with centerpieces, so is Thanksgiving. Valentine's Day, forget it. You're doing a trillion bazillion dozen roses. Like there's always something to do. Mother's Day, Mother's Day, oh my gosh. Mother's Day is so busy. Like I find myself working 10 hour days every day for like five to seven days straight. Like it's it can be really intense, really busy, really scary. So things you wanna keep in mind, like you will be sacrificing your time, your energy. So going back to the wedding and events florist, you know, something else that I wish I knew before I became a florist was how much time that I spend actually on my laptop replying to brides. Sometimes I'll meet my clients like a year to two years in advance from their wedding date, which means like they have a year to two years to like change their mind, to see something else on Pinterest that they like and change their whole idea. I had this one bride who booked me in 2021. And then like every month after that, like she kept changing her ideas. One month she wanted to do pastels. The next month she wanted to do all white. The month after that, she wanted to do bright, bold colors. Like, and I understand like it's hard. Like you see things online and you're like, oh my God, I want that. But then you see something else a couple months later and you're like, nope, that's what I want. So. As a florist, you know, you need to be flexible. You need to really understand and take time to like answer these emails. They are paying you for your advice, for your expertise, and it's completely normal that they have questions. A lot of these people who are doing these weddings and events, you know, they're only getting married once. They're only having this kind of event one time. So they have questions. So you wanna expect to spend a good amount of time like actually replying to emails and just sitting down talking to people. I hope you guys learned something today. If you like these kinds of videos, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. I post flower tutorials and videos daily. And also check out the Florist Academy which is my monthly membership program here on YouTube. There you will receive ad-free, exclusive floral design tutorials. If you're interested in that program, make sure to check it out. I will leave the link in the description box below. Follow me on Instagram at Flowers by Alexis, and I will see you all soon with another video. Bye.